arrangements for a lawyer. No, in my case, I don't think it's necessary. But why not? I think my defense is quite simple. Where to? Marigo. about 50 miles from Algiers. I took the two o'clock bus. It was very hot. I fell asleep. Madame Messer? Yes. Take me to see Mama right away. First, our warden would like to see you. Yes, all right. We'll have to bury her quickly. It's so hot out here on the plane. You know, in this part of the country, everything goes fast, even ah. funerals. What an awful thing to say to Monsieur. That's not nice at all. Oh, that's quite all right. It's interesting, really. Soul became part of our family three years ago. And you were her sole supporter. I don't earn much as a clerk. That must be written in your record somewhere. Well, no explanation is necessary, my dear fellow. I suppose you wish to pay your respects now. I've had the remains placed in the mortuary to avoid upsetting the others. Gaston, would you be so kind? Take care of Monsieur Mursault for me. Yes, Monsieur, of course. I understand. You just weren't able to take care of her. She needed a nurse, and you simply could not afford it. In any case, That's true. your mother was much happier here. Uh, you're right. We had nothing to talk about anymore. 
And then she hated to stay alone all day. the lid on, but I'll remove it so you may have a look. You don't want me to? No. But why not? It doesn't matter. I know what you mean. Why don't you sit down? what she had. You can get some supper in the refectory, monsieur. Thanks, just the same. I'm not very hungry. But then would you like me to bring you some coffee with milk? I would like a cup of coffee, yes. i leave you alone uh, for a while. Thanks. Mother's friends from the home will be coming to the wake tonight. It's customary. I'll go fetch the chairs and black coffee. How long have you lived here? Six years. Can't you put out one of the lights, monsieur? That's impossible, because they're all on a single circuit. It's all or nothing. Lady has been weeping all day. She was late mother's companion. 
Now she says she's completely alone. As a rule, we don't permit the inmates to attend funerals, for their own good, of course. I've made an exception, however, for a friend of your mother's, Thomas Pores. Uh, monsieur. It's actually a touching little story. Monsieur Perez and your mother have become almost inseparable. The other old people used to tease him about having a fiancée. Naturally, he was quite grieved by her death. It's hot. Yes, it is. Is that your mother there? Yes, it is. How old was she? Quite old. Anima ius et anime omnium fidelium defunctorum, per misericordiam de requies copin pache. Amen. I shall have vivid memories of that day. The blood red earth pattering on mother's coffin. Thomas Perez crumbling like a broken marionette. And the scarlet geraniums on the graves in the cemetery. Excuse me. Well, fancy meeting you here. Marie. I haven't seen you in ages. Are you still working at Chiquiano's place? Where do you work now, Marie? Oh, still at the place I went to when I left Chipianos. <laughs> I'm really sorry you didn't stay with us. Oh, your job's much nicer.
Under my head, I could feel Marie's stomach gently rising and falling. We lay on the raft for a long time, drowsy in the sun. Huh? Well, what do you say? Will you come to the movies with me? Can we see the picture with Fernandel? <laughs> That'll be it. Are you in mourning? For my mother. When did she die? Yesterday. it was Sunday, and that depressed me a little. I don't like Sundays. It was another clear afternoon, and the streets were shimmering in the heat. Only a few people passed by, but they all seemed to be in a hurry. another Sunday, that Mama was buried now, and that I'd be going back to work tomorrow as usual. All in all, nothing had really changed. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. <sighs> Sit down. Are you feeling all right, my soul? Yes, thanks, I'm fine. Not too tired? No, no. I was sorry to hear the news. Thank you, sir. Tell me, Merceau, just how old was your mother? Uh, in her sixties. Ah, pretty old. Uh, Emmanuel. Yeah. Come on, let's see. Yeah. Let's go. 
Hey, Celeste, we're here. Oh, Melsa, feeling all right? Sure, but I'm starved. How are you? Fine. Sit down, then. I get you the usual, then. Uh, just relax. Yes. What do you have? Salad first, then steak, hot for cheese, and coffee. Here we are. Filthy mongrel, damn you. Has he done anything wrong? He's always in the way. Bless <laughs> him. Come on, you. <laughs> uh. We treat that dog. It's abominable, huh? No. I got some pretty good wine. How about having something to eat with me? Uh, thanks very much. Like I said, there's this dame I know, an old mistress of mine. That man I told you I beat up. He was the dame's brother. Look, I want to be honest with you. I know what the neighbors have been saying about me, that I pimp for a living. But I'm telling you, that's a dirty lie. I work in a warehouse, that's all. Well, anyway, about this dame. I was paying her rent. And added to that 15 bucks a week for food. A couple of presents now and then. I mean, look, that's plenty for any woman. But Madame said I was stingy. Said she couldn't make out with what I gave her. Look, I says, why don't you work a couple of hours a week, eh? It's about time you helped me out a bit. <laughs> Nothing doing, she says. And then I started figuring that something dirty was going on. One day, I found this lottery ticket in her pocketbook. And she wouldn't tell me where she'd gotten the money to buy it, you see. Then, another time, I found a ticket from a pawn shop, proving that she'd hocked two bracelets. You follow me? Who the hell gave her those bracelets? I didn't give her any. It was somebody else. So I kicked her out, after beating her up. I bowled her out good, too. I said all she ever wanted was jumping into the sack, you see. <laughs> But that isn't all, Monsieur Marceau. You'll be real sorry someday, I says to her. Because with me, you never had it so good. Mm. There were times I used to beat her, but to play around, that's all. Hmm. Or she'd complain, scream a bit. Then we'd end up in the sack. <laughs> but no thanks. Just a little. But I'm through with her now. The bitch has got to be punished. Look, I want some advice about that. Hmm. At first, I thought I'd take her to a hotel, call up the police, and have her arrested as a prostitute. Then I figured I'd call a couple of friends I got in the business. But all they said was, why not mark her up? Hmm. Except it ain't quite what I had in mind, you follow? So I thought I'd find out your opinion about it. Well, I'm not sure, but it's an interesting story. Didn't she lie to me, Merceau? Was I right to think she was cheating on me? Well, I guess it looks that way. Huh? Let me tell you what I have in mind. A 
I want to send a letter to this dame. And let her have it, you know what I mean? But at the same time, kind of try and make her feel sorry. When she gets here, I'll take her to bed. I wouldn't want to miss a chance for a good lay, you follow me? But as soon as we finished, I'll throw her out for good and spit in her eye. <laughs> what do you think? Well, that way, I guess she'll get what's coming to her. That's right. The trouble is, I know what I want to tell the bitch, but I'm so lousy at writing letters, you see. So I was hoping you might help me out. Would you mind writing it tonight? Huh? Uh, why not? I know you're a real bad. Name's Yasmina. Yasmina Berhunter. Arab girl? Yes. I will. Huh. Do you love me? Hmm. No, I don't suppose I do. But if you like, we'll get married. Marriage is a serious thing. No. 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 Then she said that I was strange somehow. And that she loved me because I was strange. But that maybe one day she would come to hate me for just that reason. After that, we suddenly felt anxious to get back to my apartment. And to go to bed together. I left the windows open, and it was good to feel the cool night air caressing our bodies. Ah, leave the door open. To let some fresh air in, all right? Sure. Look what I put on. Ah, what you get? Ah, perfect. You bastard! You lousy man! What's that? Ah, oh, that's gone on for eight years. <laughs> the dog has a very bad skin disease. Oh. It's almost bald, and it's all covered with scabs. Oh. And the old man looks exactly like his dog. Oh. <laughs> And what's even funnier, <laughs> the dog has learned to walk just the way the old man does. <laughs> They're like twins, but oddly enough, they can't stand each other. <laughs> Do you love me? That doesn't mean anything. But I don't suppose so. <clears throat> Do 
No. Yes, no. Mm. cigarette out of your mouth. <laughs> can I pick it up now, monsieur? Yes, you can pick it up. You better show a little respect for the law. <laughs> He's a pimp, monsieur. He peddles horns. Is that legal to call a guy a pimp, officer? Shut up! I'm not through with you I yet. Said, shut up! And you? Get out. Go on. You better stay right here until the chief wants you down at the station. Do you understand? Yes, monsieur. You're a fine sight. You're so drunk, you're trembling all over. I'm not drunk, monsieur. When a cop glows at me, I tremble out of fear. Clear out. It's all over, everyone. Get they should going. be kicked out of this house, the brute. Thanks a lot, Merson. You're a real sport to help me out of this mess. Huh. You're a pal, you know that. That was right to tell him she cheated on me. Cops are all alike. I know just how to handle them. Uh -huh. Say, uh, did you think I'd hit that guy back? No, no. I mean, I don't care. I don't like cops anyhow. You want to go someplace or pick up a couple of holes? No, not particularly. And besides, I've got to be up early tomorrow. I'm pretty tired myself, and I've had enough of women for one day. So we just walked slowly home. Ramon was very nice to me. And I thought, what a pleasant evening it was. Sell him, Han. What's happened? Uh, my dog is gone. I took him over to the fairgrounds tonight, as I always do. The crowds were overwhelming at the fair. I stopped just for a minute to look at the fire eater. And can you imagine? He disappeared. Huh. Of course, I'd always meant to buy a tighter collar for him to wear. But I never thought the lousy mud would get away like that. It's a shame. He'll find a way home. Oh, no, he'll starve to death first. Because nobody will take him in. Why, he's disgusting with those scabs all over his body. The police will shoot him, I know it. Look, I bet they just take him to the pound. 
You can get him back for a fee. Then they can kill him for all I care. I won't pay a cent for that much. <laughs> Good night. And thanks again. It all came off just fine. I really taught that bitch a lesson. Good night. What do you think will happen, Monsieur Merceau, if they won't help me find him? What am I going to do? Why don't you go out and buy another dog? Uh, I'm already used to this one. I understand. Have you had him very long? Since my wife died. Uh, I never felt much affection for my wife, monsieur. But as time went on, I got used to having her there, and uh, when she died, I felt so lonely. Then I thought about taking in a dog and asked an old friend for one. He brought it here, a tiny thing like that. It was so young, I had to feed it from a bottle. Huh. But a dog's life is shorter than a man's, and so we grew all together, you might say. Mm. We've had some fights, he and I, but he was a very good little dog all the same, monsieur. He was a good breed. Ah? Oh, you should have known him before he was ill. The dog had a splendid coat everybody admired, but the trouble was he'd gotten very old, and there isn't any remedy for old age. Yes, I guess you're right. Well, hmm. your poor mother was especially fond of my dog. Did you know that, monsieur? And you, you suffered a terrible loss, too. I hope I won't hear a dog barking tonight. I know that I'll think it's mine. Good night. Terrific guy. He invited us to his beach house this weekend. I told him all about you, yes. Sure, bring your girlfriend with you. My son's wife will like having another woman come. Look, Ramon, I've got to hang up. I'm coming. Hold on, it's important. Will you hurry? Ah. I want to tell you another thing. Listen, I was tailed the whole morning by some Arabs. One of them is my ex-girlfriend's brother, you see. So look, tonight, when you get home, keep an eye open. And if you spot the guy, you let me know. It's very important. I will. You can count on me, Ramon. No, so. What? Ramon, I've got to hang up. I'll talk to you later. Yeah. Goodbye. Twin, sit down. Please, sit down. Listen, Merceau, I have a little project in mind I'd like to discuss with you. I want to hear what you think about it. It's like this, I want to start a branch in Paris to allow us to deal more directly with the larger companies. I want to know if you'd object to being sent there. It would be a fantastic opportunity, and you could travel a good part of the year. Are you still young? You have a marvelous time in Paris. I guess so, but I don't really care. What? Aren't you the least be tempted by the chance to change your life? But it's impossible. 
to change one's life. I might as well remain where I am. I feel reasonably content here. Why must your head be up in the clouds all the time? You've no ambition, my friend, and you cannot succeed without that. I'll talk to you later. You can go for lunch. As a student, I was very ambitious. But then I had to drop out of my school. And I finally came to realize how unimportant that is. So I'm sorry. It's just that... <sighs> Excuse me. Mm, a glorious day. Just that. I feel good all over. What do you have in your bag? Let me see. If you're looking for something to eat, I didn't pack a thing. But we can go for coffee. Yes, yes. Ah, yes, Ramon. I would like you to meet Mademoiselle Cardon, Raymond Saint. Let's get coffee. Great idea. What is it? The second one from the left. That's the guy. Let's go. Hi. Is anything wrong? Oh, just an Arab Ramon and a fight. Here comes the bus. Let's go then, unless you want coffee. Ah. We can always get some later. No point in wasting time. Thank you. I shouldn't brag about my husband, but he's the best fisherman in Algiers. Look what he caught this morning. Hey, Masson! Oh, Masson! <laughs> We're opening a fish tank! Remember to kiss me this morning. Huh? <sighs> I was thinking, why not tell your boss you just reconsidered everything he said and accept that job in Paris next year? I'd come with you, naturally. I'm dying to see Paris. I lived there once, huh? a long time ago. Isn't it pretty? Dirty as hell. Pigeons, in their courtyards, and people with pale faces. <laughs> Madame Masson, can I come and help you? It's not fair for me to sit by and let you do all the work. No, no, stay there. I can manage just fine. It's all right. Almost ready to eat, darling. Good. Hey, my son has come back in, you see. I bet lunch is ready. And I'm starving too. Shall we go? Uh, this way.
not true. Really. It's true, everybody. It's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> we had lunch earlier than usual. As I always say, when you're hungry, it's high time to no, eat. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I propose we take a little walk on the beach, gentlemen. My wife always likes to take a nap after lunch. Oh, yes, it relaxes me. But I prefer to walk. Walking relaxes me. <laughs> <laughs> Madame Marceau, <laughs> I'll give you a hand with the dishes. Oh, thank you. That's a dear. Let's go, then. <laughs> All right. Raymond, mm -hmm. coming with us. <laughs> oh. <sighs> let's start right now and get it over with. There we are. Hey, let's go. And when you return, you'll find us curled up asleep like little dolls. <laughs> Save all right. How did they manage to find out you were here? They saw us get on the bus. In case they mean trouble, I want you to grab the other man, then I'll jump on mine. Hey, Merceau, if another one comes, he's yours. I tell you, it isn't bad enough. You're okay. Come on, let's get you back to the house. There's a beach house up on the cliff. He's usually there on Sundays. I'll go get him. No, no, I'm perfectly oh. all right. I'll go oh, up there myself. I'll happened? take you there. We got into a fight with some arms. All right.
more. It isn't fair to fire in cold blood. All right, first I can bait him, then I'll shoot. No. Be sensible, Ramon. Hand me the revolver. Just rough him up a little. If he pulls out his knife, I'll take care of him. They're gone. We scared them away, eh? Right. We better go back to town. The bus leaves at five, you know. the veil of sweat and of light that blinded me. I realized that I had shattered the impassive stillness of the afternoon and the shimmering silence of the beach. And so I fired again. Four shots like four fateful raps on the door to my destiny. I was caught robbing a store. What did you do? I killed an Arab.
When you want to sleep, take this mat and use it as a pillow. You have to learn how to roll it upright. Uh, like that? Do you smoke? Uh -huh. Same old story. You idiots never follow orders. But we did what they told us. I said to you do. put him in here. You got it all wrong as usual. He's supposed to be in solitary. Russo. Russo. Get up. Come on. We're going to solitary. Come on, shake your leg. You two take him down. This way. Go on, get going. your case. It's extremely tricky, of course. However, I know I can get you off if you'll be sure to follow my advice. Thank you. Let's get right down to it. They've already made inquiries into your private life and uh, they've learned that your mother died recently at the home for the aged in Maringo. They even conducted an investigation at the home and unfortunately they gathered evidence to prove that uh, you were exceptionally callous at your mother's funeral. Hmm? I hate to pry about this, but it's quite important. If the prosecution attempts to follow up this accusation, you could be in serious trouble. Were you truly grieved by your mother's death? You understand I must be prepared to refute the charge. I'm not quite sure what to say. It doesn't seem to matter very much to me. I care for her, yes. And yet there were moments I wished her dead. Don't we all do the same? Promise me not to repeat that at the trial. Or to the prosecuting attorney. Phew. You see, the day that they buried mother, I was tired like a sleepwalker. I stumbled around like I was in a daze. Naturally, I'd prefer... I'd prefer that Mama was alive. That isn't enough, Merceau. Is it all right to say you were stifling normal emotional reactions? No. It'd be a lie. I learned today that the director of the home is serving as a witness for the prosecution with other members of the staff. This could be disastrous. But that has absolutely nothing to do with my case. You haven't been involved with the law before, have you? Tell me, did you love your mother? Why, yes, like everybody does. Fired uh, five shots, is that right? One after the other. No. At first I only shot once. Then I fired the others a little later. I see. But what's the reason for your waiting between the initial and second shots? Explain why you continued to shoot at the dead man. Why? I insist on hearing the answer. Why? Tell me why. Do you see? Do you realize who this is? Yes, I do, monsieur. I believe in the Lord God. I believe that even the vilest sinner can obtain forgiveness in God's eyes. 
But first the sinner must become like a child, and in true repentance bear his ailing soul to God. Obviously only one point in your confession is unclear. The fact that you say you hesitated before firing the second shot. Everything else is quite in order, but that completely baffles me. Do you believe in the Almighty God? No. Why, that's impossible. There isn't a single man on earth who doesn't. No man who doesn't at least acknowledge he exists. If I had any doubts at all, my whole life would have no meaning. Do you want my life to be senseless? It doesn't matter to me. I'm a Christian, and I beg the Lord to forgive you your transgressions. But how can you deny that he suffered for your sake? You must. You must. Yes, I'm sure you must believe in him. No. I've never in all my life seen a soul as hardened as yours is. All the criminals who've come here shed bitter tears on seeing his precious image. Are you sorry for what you did? I'm not sorry, exactly. I'm rather a little annoyed. That will be all today, Monsieur Antichrist. prisoner's first complaint. I can understand why. It's unfair to take that away too. Uh, but isn't that the purpose of being in prison? What purpose is that? Why, to put you in here to deprive you of liberty. I forgot that I'm being punished. And that explains it. Yes, you have brains, you know. The others don't. But you all end up doing it yourselves. Everybody out, please. Everybody out, please. Everybody out, please. You'll be acquitted. 
We'll go swimming at the beach. This way. Time is up. Goodbye, Mama. Goodbye, my son. Time is up. I don't think this they let way. me come to see you again. They said they can't give me permission because... because we're not married. Time is up. They said I could come just this once. The summer had slipped away and quietly returned. <clears throat> shall we begin? And now the court shall touch upon matters which initially appear unimportant but that bear most directly on the matter at hand. Let us consider certain key facts. I see that during the month of June 1936 you put your mother in the Marengo residence for the agent. Am I correct? Yes, Your Honor. I see. But why? I didn't make enough money to really provide the thing she needed. That's the reason. I see. Were you upset by the idea of putting your mother in the home? Did you miss her at all? We'd both become totally independent of each other. And anybody else. So we were both able to adjust to this change. I do not wish to pursue this point. Has the prosecutor any particular questions he wishes to ask? I would indeed, Your Honor. With your kind permission, I would like to inquire if the accused did in fact return to the cove alone with the intention of killing the Arab. Why no? In that case, why was the accused armed? And why then did he return to the very same spot? I guess, just by chance. Your Honor, what is all for the moment? Counsel for the defense, object, Your Honor. One moment, one moment, monsieur. It's getting late. We'll get around to your objections after lunch. Court adjourned. We shall resume at two o'clock, at which time all of the witnesses will be heard. The court is adjourned. Remove the prisoner.
I would like to inquire if on any occasion the mother of the accused expressed displeasure with her son's conduct. Yes, many times, Your Honor. But that's to be expected. Our guests always complain about their relatives. Very well. Uh, I would also like to know whether it appeared to you she resented the fact of having been sent to your institution. Yes, Your Honor. Was there anything in particular that you observed about the accused on the day of his mother's funeral? Yes. He seemed unusually calm and composed. I must in all honesty say that I was shocked by his behavior. He refused to see his mother's body. He did not shed a single tear and he hurried off as soon as the ceremony was over without even pausing to pay his last respect at the graveside. Ah, uh -huh. very well. If there are any questions that the prosecutor wishes to ask at this time, he may now proceed. Oh no, that's all I need to hear. Very well, thank you, monsieur. You may step down. He told me he wouldn't see the body. And what's more, he smoked cigarettes, drank coffee, and then he went to sleep. I didn't hear what he said. Would your honor please request the witness to repeat his testimony? Do you mind repeating what you said, monsieur? Repeat what you said. I said that as he sat there in front of the coffin, the prisoner drank a cup of coffee and smoked a cigarette, and then he went to sleep. Thank you. Your Honor, may I have the floor? Would Your Honor be so kind as to ask this man if during the wake he did not also smoke a cigarette? Who was on trial here? Does my learned colleague think that by slandering an honest witness he can shake the abundant and cogent evidence against the accused. I accepted the cigarette only because the monsieur offered it and I didn't know how to say no, Your Honor. I see. Does the accused have anything he would like to add? No, nothing. Except to add he's spoken the truth. I did give him a cigarette that night. Well, it was me that offered him the coffee, Your Honor. Not those words, gentlemen of the jury. Yes, the jury will seize the import, I know. And they will agree that a total stranger might offer him coffee. But that he should have refused the offer out of respect for the poor dead woman who brought him into the world. Monsieur Perez, would you please tell the court how the accused behaved on the day of his mother's funeral? You must understand, Your Honor, I was very, very upset that day. And I honestly didn't notice him at all, especially since I fainted, Your Honor. How could I keep my eye on Monsieur? Tell me, did you see him cry? No. Ah, mark those words, gentlemen of the jury. But... Can you swear to the court that he didn't weep at all? No. <laughs> These whole proceedings are a mockery. The truth is false and lies are true. Well, that will be all. <laughs> Don't worry, it's going to be all right. Everything's going beautifully. Count on me. Somebody tell me what's going on. I can't make head nor tail out of this. Now then, Monsieur Monsieur often ate in your restaurant. He was a good customer, Your Honor. But he was also a good friend. I see. Why was he a good friend? Just because he's a truly good man. Exactly what do you mean by that? A good man, Your Honor. There's no other definition. Order, 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 order. Did it ever appear that the accused found it difficult to, uh, uh, communicate with the rest of it? He wasn't a big blabbermouth, Your Honor. Did he... Did the accused always settle his accounts with you on time, monsieur? Always, without hesitation. With the court's indulgence, I would be very much interested to hear your opinion of the crime he committed. It seems to me it was an accident, monsieur. 
An unfortunate turn of events that sums up my opinion. I see. That is all you may step down. I'd like to say another thing, Your Honor. Proceed, Monsieur, but please be brief. He didn't mean to kill. The court will decide that. It's obvious that our function here is to meditate and to judge. <laughs> Thank you and farewell. That is all. My dear young lady, how long have you known the accused? About three years. Please speak up. Uh, about three years. I'd been employed in the office where Arthur, I mean Monsieur Merceau, worked. And what is your relationship with the prisoner? Not to be indiscreet. I'm his girlfriend. We want to get married. I would like to ask Mademoiselle Cardona to tell the court the exact date on which her relationship with the accused began. It was the first Saturday in the month of July last year, to be exact. I see, I see. The day after the funeral of Madame Merceau. Order, 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 order! I do not wish to pry into such a delicate situation with all due respect for Mademoiselle's feelings. But it's my duty to waive petty considerations of delicacy. Tell me then, exactly what did transpire on that first Saturday in July last year? <sighs> Forgive me, Mademoiselle, but I must have an answer. Well, in July, I usually spend Saturdays at the beach. I spotted him on that afternoon while I'm a peer. I spent about an hour swimming and sunbathing with him that day. Afterwards, we decided to go to the cinema. Then, back to his room. He asked me to spend the night with him. Mademoiselle Cardona has just told the court precisely what she testified to the examining magistrate during his investigation. As a result, Your Honor, I consulted uh, newspaper listings on that day for the cinema, but I prefer to ask Mademoiselle Cardona to specify what kind of film they went to see that day. It was a film with Fernandel. Ah. Oh. Gentlemen of the jury, the day after his own mother's demise, he sported at the beach, began an illicit day along with a lady, and gay as a lark, watched the comedy at the movies. <laughs> it's all a mistake. It isn't like it looks. You've twisted everything I said about that day. I know he didn't mean it. It isn't his fault. It isn't. All right, Mademoiselle, this way. He treated my poor dog with kindness. <laughs> he and his mother had uh, 
have nothing in common any longer. Things just happen like that. Things happen like that. Your Honor, I'd like to say that he's innocent. You weren't someone to pass judgment, monsieur, but to state facts. Just to answer the questions when they are put to you. Would you tell the court exactly what was your relationship with the victim? To begin with, I'm the only man that the victim hated. That's because I'd fooled with his sister. Did the victim have any reason whatsoever to dislike the accused? None at all. And Monsieur Meursault was with me on the beach that day, just by coincidence. I would now like to hear this gentleman explain to the court how it came about that this letter, which evidently led to the crime, was written by the accused. Coincidence? It would appear that the real culprit in this case is coincidence. And was it also coincidence, by any chance, that the accused went along with you to the police station? And was it again by coincidence that he did thereupon testify and so obligingly in your behalf? Monsieur Sen, would you tell us how you're currently employed here in Algiers? I work in a plant, Your Honor. It is common knowledge, gentlemen of the jury, that he does in actuality on his bread acting as a procurer and the accused was his friend and accomplice. This crime has its roots in slime and corruption. Monsieur, the prosecutor is shamelessly and without justification... We shall discuss that issue when the, the prosecutor has finished. Let him proceed. There really isn't much to add, Your Honor. There's just one more thing. Was the accused a friend of yours? Yes, he was a real pal. Was this man your friend? He was. Behold this careless criminal! A son who mourned his mother's death by wanton forays and shameful orgies, and who murdered cold-bloodedly. A poor lad who had never done him the least kind of harm. Is my client standing trial for not adoring his mother or for killing an Arab? Order, order! The way in which this man buried his one and only mother is evidence that at heart he's a criminal. And so, gentlemen of the jury, you are now acquainted with a series of events which led this man to commit murder, deliberately, with malice and aforethought, and in full awareness of his dastardly crime. To reiterate, gentlemen, there is no evidence of extenuating circumstances, there is no evidence of impulsive or irrational behavior. The man who sits before you in the prisoner's dock is an educated man. You have observed this by the way he answered my questions. Therefore, I repeat, it is impossible to conclude that he committed the crime without knowing what he was doing. I have looked into the depths of this man's soul and I have seen a gaping void within, gentlemen of the jury. To reveal the awful truth, he has no soul at all. No human spark, not even the merest speck of principle or morality so dear to ordinary men does this monster possess. No doubt, we have no right to blame the accused for lacking qualities he's morally incapable of. But here, in this court, we must stifle the human inclination to be tolerant and submit our will to the loftier demands of that noble ideal which is justice. Above all, the man that faces you in the dock embodies all that is evil and inhuman and as such has to be removed from a world that he can only corrupt. This very same court, monsieur, will try here tomorrow what seems to me to be the basest crime of all. Patricide, monsieur. And yet I must say this. The horror that even the crime of patricide inspires in my breast is but a pale reflection of the horror inspired by the callousness of the man you see before you. This man, who is morally guilty of his mother's death, is no more fit to dwell in a society of man than the vile son who slew the father that begot him. And so, without a single reservation in my heart, I ask that you impose the death penalty upon this man. It's often been my duty in the course of my long career in court to ask the extreme penalty of death. Yet duty plays no role in this affair. I feel that I must give way to my conscience, my heart, not duty. My conscience therefore compels me to seek the death penalty in this case. Because 
My conscience is repelled by this criminal, this monster devoid of any vestige of human feeling. Hmm. Have you anything whatsoever you'd like to say? Simply that, simply that I didn't intend to kill the Arab. The court will take note of your statement. I, you see, I'm at a loss to fully understand your defense. So before the court hears your lawyer do the summing up, would you please explain to me the motive, the reason for your act? Well, it was... I, I think it was the sun. <laughs> Defense counsel may now take the floor. Gentlemen of the jury. I killed a man. That I confess. Why did he say that? Lawyers always talk that way. But I too have looked into the depths of this man's soul for a time. But I don't happen to hold the opinion which my erudite friend and colleague has put forth. And I have found his soul, in fact, to be as crystal clear as a shining fountain. This is the soul of a conscientious worker, of an honest and fair young man. A friend and companion to many, a model citizen, compassionate and helpful to those around him. I was frankly amazed at the furor uh, aroused by the way in which he treated his mother. Here sits a dutiful son who took care of his mother as long as he was able to afford it, and being unequipped at last to adequately provide for her, sent her to a home, hoping that there she'd receive all the care and comfort she required. Surely, if proof be needed of the excellence of these institutions, we need only remember that they are promoted and subsidized by the very state to which we owe our allegiance. Therefore, by sending his mother to a state-supported institution, this man has on a grander scale tacitly expressed his faith in our laws, in our schools, in our hospitals, and in justice. Yes, monsieur! Injustice herself. Gentlemen of the jury, this man has made a fatal mistake, I admit. Uh, human error. You must act mercifully and not condemn him. The circumstances in this case are extenuating. I think you'll agree. So let his conscience be his judge and his soul tormentor, the almighty God. Bravo! You were splendid! In the name of the people of France, this court, after due and impartial deliberation of this case, finds the accused guilty of the crime which he has been charged, and in accordance with the prescriptions of the law, condemns Arthur Merceau to be decapitated in full view of the general public. I've heard they always come for you at dawn. Now I spend my nights waiting for that one day break. I never liked being caught off guard. That is why I will only sleep during the day, watching all through the night for the first glimmer of light in the sky. At the slightest sound, I hurry to the door, press my ear to the wood, listening so intently that I can hear my own breathing. Quick horse breathing, like the panting of a dog. Then my frenzy subsides, and I know I will live another 24 hours.
I refused to see the prison chaplain three times. I have nothing to say to him. I don't feel like talking. I've spent a lot of time thinking that it makes very little difference whether one dies at the age of 30 or at the age of 70. For once you're dead, it doesn't matter how or when you died. Whenever I talk myself into believing that, I am at peace for a little while. I really do not need to see the chaplain. Don't be afraid. You usually come. At the last moment. This is just a friendly visit. It has nothing to do with your appeal. I have no information about that. Here, sit beside me. No. I'd rather not. Why wouldn't you let me visit you? I... I'm an atheist. How can you be sure there's no God? Why bother about it? It seems to me that's not really important. It's quite easy to say you feel sure. When inside you're racked by doubt. Don't you believe so? That's possible. In any case, I may not be sure about what interests me, really. But I know I'm sure of what bores me. And I'm sure I'm very bored by what you've said. Aren't you talking to me like this because you feel desperate? I'm not desperate. I'm afraid. That's human, isn't it? God can calm your fears. My friend, I'm not telling you this because you're condemned to die. We are all condemned to die. But not by execution. <laughs> so that's no consolation to me. You should realize that. I do. But you have to die someday, whether it's now or later. And then the same question will arise. How will you face that? terrible final hour. In exactly the same manner as I'm facing it this moment. Have you no hope at all then? Do you truly believe that nothing remains after you die? Right. How I pity you. Life must be unbearable for you, if you think like that. Listen to me. I'm sure that your appeal will be successful, but that's not what concerns me. You are bearing the burden of great sins which you must atone for. Man's justice is nothing at all. Only God's justice matters. I was condemned by man's justice. Man is powerless to offer you redemption. Sin means nothing to me. They've condemned me for an act that I've committed. So I'm paying the price. You may ask no more of me than that. You're wrong if you believe that. You'll be asked to pay more. A lot more than you imagined. What is that? You'll be compelled to see, to confront. Confront what? These walls are steeped in human misery. I know that. I sense the torment and sorrow they've hidden. But deep inside, I know, each man who waited here for death saw emerging from that blackness our Savior's face. You will see that face as well. All these months, I've stared at the walls and now there's nothing. Nobody there, nothing but the four walls. Yes, I stared. Uh, a long time ago. I too searched for someone's face. To 
was a face like the sun, flaming with desire. The face of a woman named Marie. But I searched in vain. It's all over now. I've never seen anything emerging from these filthy walls. Won't you try to pray then? No. Do you prize the things of this earth so much? Huh? No. no. I don't believe that. I feel sure you've often wished for a life after death. Of course I have who hasn't, but in the same way that I wish to get rich, to travel all over the world, <laughs> to have a better shaped mouth. It's no more important than that. When you think of dying, tell me, how do you envision what follows? A life where I will remember all of this. I'm sick and tired, monsieur, leave me. Time is precious now. I don't want to waste it on God. Why speak to me as monsieur? Call me father. You're not my father. You stand with the others. My son, I stand with you. But you remain unaware because your heart is filled with hate. I shall pray for you then. I don't want you to pray for me. You're so certain about everything. Not one of your certainties is worth a single strand of a woman's hair. You're not even sure if you're alive because you act like a dead man. And I, <laughs> it looks like I have nothing. But I am sure of what I am. Sure of everything. Sure of my life and now even my death. I only know that. But I'm sure that it is the truth for me. My mother doesn't matter. Nobody matters really. But especially not your God. Or how I chose to exist. Or thought I did. The others will also face this fate. As will you, don't you understand? What difference does it make if a man's accused of murder and executed for not weeping near his mother's body? Or that old Salimano never loved anybody but his mutt? Or that Marie wanted me to get married? What difference does it make if Ramon is my friend just like Celeste? Or is a better man than his? And what does it really matter if Marie is kissing another man today? Don't you see? You must die just as I die. But I'm sure of what I face. All right, let's My go future. Of him. That's Let enough. him go. Let him go. <laughs> Once he'd gone, I felt at peace again. I think I must have slept because when I opened my eyes, the stars were shining down on my face. The sounds of the countryside floated into my cell with the cool night air that smelled of earth and salt and that fanned my cheeks. The marvelous peace of the sleeping summer night washed over me like the tide. Then, just at the edge of daybreak, I heard a ship's whistle. People were starting on a voyage to a world that had ceased to exist for me. For the first time in months, I thought about Mama. And now it seemed to me that I understood why at her life's end she had taken a fiancé. Why she had pretended to make a new beginning. There too, in that home where lives were flickering out. There too, Dusk came as a mournful solace. Being so close to death, Mama must have felt a great release and ready to start life all over again. No one had the right to weep for her. And I too felt ready to start life all over again. It was as if my great rush of anger had washed me clean, purged me of hope, and gazing up at the night sky for the very first time, I opened my heart to the sweet indifference of the universe. And I felt that it was so much like myself, almost like a brother, that I realized that I had been happy. And that I was happy still.
for me to feel less alone. I only wish that there will be huge crowds of onlookers at my execution and that they greet me with howls of contempt. <laughs>